Welcome, I'm Ian Harrison for Crimson Trace. This interactive DVD has been designed to educate you about Crimson Trace products. We're going to show you how to operate our weapon-mounted lights and lasers, the advantages they give, and how you can use them in real-world situations. When it comes to personal protection, the Crimson Trace equipped firearm should not be regarded as an accessory. Rather, it's a necessity. The advantages it gives are many, and we're going to demonstrate those to you throughout this DVD. To help us do that, we've assembled some of the best experts in the firearms industry. Julie Gollop, Todd Jarrett, Richard Mann, Michael Bain, Dave Starrett, and myself, Ian Harrison. Here at Gunsight Academy, one of the world's foremost training facilities. We're going to use the range complex here to show you real life scenarios and tactics so that you can get the Crimson Trace Laser's Edge. Welcome everybody, I'm super excited to be here at this incredible facility, fantastic long range view, and I'm really excited to get in that playhouse this afternoon. My name is Ian Harrison. I'm the Media Relations Manager for Crimson Trace. I first became professionally involved in firearms when I joined the British Army. I served eight years as an infantry officer. Yeah, I have this reputation of being a fairly fierce competitor, but really I'm just out the range having fun, hanging with some friends and tearing it down. One of the biggest advantages Crimson Trace brings to the self-defense environment is its instinctive activation. What this means is that you simply pick up the weapon in a firing grip and there's no additional buttons, switches or toggles to press. Just grab the gun, the laser comes on. This is vital when seconds count. What do we mean by this? Well, we've got two guns on the range now, one with a Crimson Trace product, one with a competitor's laser. Let's see how they perform in a real life setting. First, we're gonna show you the speed and ease of use in real time. Then show you the same action in slow motion, where you can really see all the mechanics, motions and actions involved. This is where the difference between the instinctive activation from Crimson Trace and all other activation methods is a huge advantage, when fractions of a second really count. As you can see from the test we just did, instinctive activation is not only faster, it's more accurate too. You're looking for that peripheral threat out there and you're not going to be focused on your front sight when you're doing that. So having that you know, target-based laser system where you, know, you have the dot on the target. My experience as a, as a police officer, taking your focus off of that threat onto something else is probably the absolute hardest thing there is to yeah. do. My name's Dave Starin. I work at Gunsight Academy. I was a law enforcement officer for 20 years. My first experience with laser was as a SWAT officer when we do things like work behind ballistic shields where you've got a very narrow field of view and you can't actually get a traditional sight picture and we found the lasers worked very well in that conjuncture. Lasers can be very beneficial in a wide spectrum no matter what your experience is, your background or your purpose to use them for, there are applications where they can be extremely useful.
you know, the first tendency is often to throw a, a revolver a woman's way. Yeah. And that may work for a lot of women. And I've carried a revolver for a number of years. But I prefer something small and light, but something that I can manipulate like the MMP Steel. Yeah. It's something that I can work with, be accurate with, and be confident with. And that's the most important thing. My name is Julie Golub. I have been a shooter pretty much most of my life. I started shooting when I was 14, competitively. I uh, joined the military in 1995 as military police, but I went straight to the Army Marksmanship Unit, and I was the first and only female there. In all my years as a competitive shooter, I'm always looking for tools that make me better. So today we're going to talk about how lasers can make you a more accurate and confident shooter. Karen, one of the great advantages to a laser is actually in dry practice. As an instructor, I can see what you're doing on your target and you have that positive affirmation of what you're doing as well. Okay, so go ahead and pull the gun out. Show me clear. Okay, we are clear. And go ahead and extend onto the target. Okay, you see the laser there? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and break the shot. Nice and smooth. Beautiful. You can cover those up with one paster, basically. <laughs> Great job. See how the difference with the laser, you can really improve that accuracy? Yes. Cool. Very good. One of the things you have to be when you're working the street as a cop is you got to be cognizant of everything around you. You, you can't get focused on a single threat. And being able to put your red dot on the threat and know that you've got that threat covered in case you have to pull the trigger, but still let your peripheral vision pick up around you so other threats so you can move, I mean, it makes a big difference. I'm Richard Mann. I'm a freelance gun writer and firearms consultant. Look at me. No, look at all of me. Now I know I'm not Tom Selleck, even with the hat. But if I'm a bad guy, you better be looking at me. Every bit of me. Why? I might have a gun. Now this is a safe gun, by the way. And if I have a gun, I may decide to pull it. And if I do, it's going to be quick. You need to see that movement when it starts, not when it's over. The true stopping power of a handgun are not the bullets that come out of the barrel. It's the psychological effect it has when it's pointed at someone. You can ask any police officer. They point handguns at people much more often than they pull triggers. And generally it produces the standard response, which is hands up. Another advantage of laser sights is that they help you fight off tunnel vision. When you're using standard sights and focusing on a target or a bad guy, you typically get tunnel vision. What I'm talking about is the areas around the target become blurry. With the laser sight where you can drop it down below your vision plane or pull it back in close to your body, you can still see the red dot where you want it, but it opens up your peripheral vision to see maybe other bad guys or family members or innocent people that may be standing around. We've talked about concealed carry. We, that, that topic keeps coming up, keeps coming up. The audience has changed. And, and, and I don't think any of us were really prepared for this flood of concealed carry holders that have come into, into the gun culture. You know, we, we came up with guns. We, we grew up with them. We have a really good, we've shot competitively for mm -hmm. years. But I, when I'm talking to new concealed carry holders, the questions they have are questions that, that, that we had in the beginning too. It's just been a long time since the beginning. But I, you know, I think as an industry, it, it surprised us. I'm Michael Bain, and for the last 10 years, I've been working on television doing guns. My flagship show, Shooting Gallery, is now in its 13th season. You know, there's been a profound change in the gun culture in the last, say, five to 10 years. Gun culture version 2.0 is driven by concealed carry, 
by the training community, and by the practical shooting sports. A grip-mounted laser gives you, as a civilian, an advantage. You're going to use it at a time when the stress level is going to be through the ceiling. You need any advantage that you can give yourself. And I feel very strongly that that laser is a critical, critical advantage. When we talk about a carry gun, the things that make it easy to carry, like this Ruger LCP, one of the most successful carry guns in history, are that it's light, it's small. That means it recoils more, it barks, it makes it harder to shoot. The easier the gun is to carry, the harder it is to shoot. Secondly, take a look at those sights. If you look at my bedside gun, it not only has a laser, it not only has a flashlight, it's got great big blocky sights. Makes it really easy to get an excellent sight picture. So carry guns, typically, maybe not so great on sights. And that's where the laser comes in. See that red dot? When we talk about criminals, what we're talking about are individuals that make risk-reward decisions. They're trying to decide if you are going to be prey today. When they see that red dot or they see that green dot, there's one thing they know with absolute certainty, and that's there is a bullet behind the dot. So it doesn't actually matter if it's a small frame woman or maybe a guy who's really a little shaky. The bullet is coming after the dot. It helps criminals make really informed decisions. The great advantage of a laser grip is you know when you've done a good job of gripping the gun because the laser comes on. We strongly suggest that you practice and practice and practice safely, dry, no ammunition in the room. The laser will teach you how to grip the gun. It doesn't matter whether the laser is on a grip or on the trigger guard. It always works perfect in low light situations. And finally, Crimson Trace strongly recommends that you get training. And so do I. The training is out there if you are willing to look for it. Bad things typically happen in the dark, and when they do happen, you need light, instant light, like the Crimson Trace light guard system. Now, typically, we don't search with a weapons-mounted light. That's reserved for threat verification. We see a threat, we throw the light on to make sure we identify that threat. However, if you have to search, if this is the only light that you have, the Crimson Trace system is designed to be a very broad beam. It's not a very narrow beam. That allows you to search along the edges. The other advantage of this system is it operates with one hand. It's got really good light discipline. It's easy to turn the light off and on. Suppose you have an aggressor on the ground. Maybe there's no shots fired. You're able to hold that weapons mounted light just off to the side of that aggressor. So if he or she should look back towards you, they're looking directly into a very bright light. And look at the profile on the light guard. It's narrow. That's critically important for a concealed carry holder. That means you're gonna be able to get holsters that fit with the light mounted on your gun. So you will have that light when you need it. And remember, everything looks better in the light. Todd Jarrett. I have spent almost 30 years of my life shooting and I still shoot roughly around 85,000 rounds a year. I would say from 1986 until 1996, I hound a gun four hours a day for 10 years. You are at Gun Sights Training Shooting Academy. Today we're going to talk about concealed carry holders and some of the things that we do like a scenario in a parking lot. Not only shooting and remove is going to be an advantage for you, but I'm going to show you how to do that properly with the targets we have on the range out here. So let's talk about the very first scenario we have here. I'm getting out of a vehicle, engaging three targets down range.
So when you're practicing with these techniques, I will tell you that the laser itself will give you a huge advantage of being able to give you precision and accuracy. Let's talk about lasers and iron sights on the move for concealed carry. You must always want to put yourself in a situation where you have to be able to move from one position to another. By looking at iron sights, it's very difficult to concentrate on the front sight and also look at the target. The laser gives you huge advantages because you're always concentrating on the target. If you're moving and the target's moving, you can never ever concentrate on the front sight. The laser gives you that precision and accuracy at all times. Whenever my hand is on the gun, you will always notice that the laser is on. Instinctive activation is a hallmark of all Crimson Trace products. These are the things that are going to save your life. And this is why we come out and practice on the range. We touched on uh, different sized guns and, and some of the benefits of Crimson Trace. Let's talk about the difference between a red and a green laser. I'm starting to see green a lot more prevalent. Yeah, for the longest time, red's been the only way to go. Um, and that's a, like a, six, a 635 nanometer laser. Um, green is becoming more prevalent. Um, and green has a lot of technical difficulties to overcome. For example, they draw a lot of power. And the reason they do that is instead of just a, just a laser diode and a lens, you then have an 808 nanometer diode, you have a frequency doubler chip, you have a collimator, well, you have a lens. But, but humans evolved in nature, and the most prevalent color in nature is, guess what? The one we can see the easiest, which is green. So, you know, we've, we've covered almost every aspect here. I mean, we've talked about instinctive activation, weapon-mounted lights, um, threat, threat verification. Uh, concealed carry. I mean, we've covered all these topics where a laser can be beneficial. Uh, and in a minute, we're going to see how this works in real life.
This is Todd interview, take one. Action! That didn't work. Gunsight has not got into the zombie craze. <laughs> we will teach you how to defend yourself, absolutely. Um, no matter what that may be, zombie, bad guy, <laughs> creature, whatever it is. That's, there, there is very little photographic evidence of him smiling. <laughs> Action! Hi, Richard. Hi, uh, Tiffany. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you were born and raised and about the culture you were brought up in? We were born in West Virginia. Probably 85% hillbilly, and I guess the rest is probably redneck. Action! Yeah! Yes! Thank you. We have an audience now. Oh my god. Don't answer. Can I get a couple questions? Oh, you really, Julie, go off. Yes, sir. Oh, you're real sure. You are. Shot, okay, we don't have time for this. Go! Move forward. <laughs> <laughs>